A very warm welcome to all of you. My name is Ashish and you're watching the story of accession of Hyderabad, right? We recently celebrated the Hyderabad Liberation Day on 17th of September and that is why the story becomes very important for you to know. Was Nizam the last Muslim ruler of the world or did he want to go with Pakistan as it is widely believed or did he not? All of this interesting story in the history and the story of post-independence India and one particular episode that is history of accession of Hyderabad. Now Hyderabad's story does not start with Nizam. It actually starts with the Golconda Kingdom, also known as the Qutub Shahi Kingdom. Now Qutub Shahi Kingdom was actually the only Shia or one of the most important Persian origin Shia dynasties in India. Not just that, after Golconda Kingdom was captured by Aurangzeb, it came under one particular person known as Kamaruddin Khan who was known as the first Nizam of Hyderabad. Here you are seeing the picture of uh, Kamruddin Khan, who later on became to be known as Chin Klich Khan Asavja, the first Nizam of Hyderabad. And from there, the story of Hyderabad's Nizam Shahi or the Nizamat starts. Now, the story is of the last Nizam. Actually, Mir Osman Ali Khan Asavja was the seventh and last Nizam of Hyderabad. He was, and it is believed so, rightly, that he was the richest person of the world at his times. At around 1937, he was declared to be the richest person of the world. But you know what? He was a miser as well, a kanjus, if you say it in Hindi. Actually, he used to wear crumpled kurtas, tor kurtas, pajamas, etc. Never showed off his wealth. He used to sit in a corner at his palace. In fact, never used the official royal palace for his residence. Not just that, he was ruling over a majority of 87% Hindu population. But the Muslims in his state occupied 90% of the jobs which were on to offer. The state jobs were only reserved for Muslims. Not just that, he earned rupees 25 million in rent every year. Not just that, he was also owning 2% of USS GDP at that point of time. If you see a cover, of uh, Time magazine here, he was uh, called in 1937 the richest person of the world. But you know what? Uh, never offered even Osmani biscuits or chai uh, to his visitors. And his visitors included who's who, including Nehru and Patel. Everybody complained that Nizam offers no hospitality. That was the truth of the most richest person of the world. But why was Hyderabad important for India? Now, as you see Hyderabad here, it was located, if I would say, right at the belly, right at the backbone of India. The pictures that you see in uh, yellow are princely states of India. Hyderabad was one of the biggest princely states. It covered around 80,000 square miles. And the present day Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra and Karnataka were parts of the Hyderabad state. Such a big state, not just the Hyderabad city. but. Sardar Patel said that a Pakistan-dependent or a Pakistan-oriented Hyderabad is a cancer at India's belly and cannot be allowed to remain free. That made things very clear post-independence. Now, Nizam's nobles, particularly people who were there uh, near the coterie of Nizam, uh, they thought that Nizam is actually the last Muslim ruler of the world. Was he the last Muslim ruler of the world? Because Ottomans were uh, annexed in the First World War and Ottomans and Khalifa was considered as the last ruling Muslim elite of the world. And everybody around Nizam made him believe so that, sir, you are the last Muslim emperor of the world. Now, before I go to was he really the last Muslim emperor of the world, here is your last chance for joining the bus for 2024 UPSC Civil Services Examinations. I know that most of you who are watching this video are preparing for civil services examinations. And here is one affordable but quality leading program for you. If you want impeccable language based classes, particularly in Hindi, we have purely English classes for you. That is called as P2I batches, prelims to interview. Not just we'll prepare you for prelims, but we'll also prepare you for mains. And that too, when you clear prelims, you will again be called at our campuses. For prelims, we'll be having an online teaching mode, but for mains, as in when you clear prelims, you'll be called at our, at our campuses and will be provided coachings free of cost. That means 
at this particular cost only with no added burden on students. The idea is to see our dear students qualify mains and see their names in the final list, not just prelims. So while most of the classes stop at giving uh, their basic coachings for just prelims, we are here trying to give you extra, something extra for mains as well as interview. That's why the batches are called as prelims to interview. So here is your last chance. Enroll, but don't forget to use the code ASHLIFE. Once you use the code ASHLIFE, then only you will get the heaviest discount, right? So don't forget to use the code ASHLIFE and uh, use it for your own opportunity. I'm sure I'll see you in the classes. More such stories in the classes. Now, coming to the question, was Hyderabad really the last Muslim uh, rule or last Muslim empire of India? Actually, not so. As we said before, Hyderabad ruled over 87% of the Hindu population. That didn't make it as the last Muslim uh, empire in India. Not just that, people who were around Nawab and people who were around Nizam made him believe so. And one person who was very particular in this was Qasim Rizvi. Qasim Rizvi, as you can see it here, was the head of Razakars, a militia, as well as he was leading the Ittehadul Muslimin. Now, these were fundamentalist Islamic organizations which were also politically and militarily active. They were the non-state actors and they used to perpetrate hate crimes against the majority of the population, that is Hindus. Razakars and Qasim Rizvi used to say things like this. For example, he said that if India were ever to attack Hyderabad, all that they would find is the bones and ashes of one and a half crore Hindus. Not just that, he used to boast about Nizam. He used to say that we are the kings of Deccan and Nizam's throne and crown are the symbols of our political and cultural domination. So we should never allow Nizam to go away. Now, was he really that much? Uh, Loyal to Nizam, that is what history shows, he was actually not. Nizam actually didn't want to go with Pakistan. Yes, you heard it right. Muhammad Ali Jinnah was not a very good assurer to Nizam. Jihan. Nizam often used to ask Muhammad Ali Jinnah that, look, if this is Hyderabad, and uh, I'm sure that uh, you can see the map out here, he said that, look, this is Hyderabad and it is a landlocked country. It is a landlocked uh, princely state. So let's suppose tomorrow India were to blockade Hyderabad. India were to, uh, you know, stop the supplies, essential supplies to Hyderabad. How will you provide us essential services? So for example, Nizam used to ask, will you provide us oil? Will you provide us kerosene? Will you provide us petrol? Muhammad Ali Jinnah had no answer for that. He used to say that please go for sacrifice. You should sacrifice yourself. You should go for all out war. But he never talked about the practical approach. Second thing, Nizam saw two of the most important princely states come towards India, accede to India, right? The first state was uh, a Muslim ruled uh, Junagar state. Uh, Nawab Mahabad Khanji, who was the ruler of Junagar, announced in September 1947 that he would go to Pakistan. As soon as he announced that, the government of India swung into action and by November of the same year, Junagadh was acceded to India. 26th October, Maharaja Hari Singh of Kashmir also signed the instrument of accession, declaring it to be a part of India. Now, these two important, if I would say, princely states made it possible for Nizam to smell the coffee, right? He decided that he should play with India. He should uh, have his own strategy and going with Pakistan is not the answer. So actually he wanted independence on his own. First, he signed what you call as a standstill agreement to just, you know, keep everything calm and everyone calm. So he signed a standstill agreement, but at the same point of time, uh, he decided to go to United Nations and United States for help. Here you are seeing two gentlemen. In fact, the first gentleman out here is Sir Walter Moncton, an ex-solicitor general of Britain, right? He was the ex-solicitor general of Britain, very important, influential person in Britain, and he was hired by Nizam. He became the Nizam's lawyer, and he used to lobby about Nizam in Britain. Not just that, he even made Churchill speak about Hyderabad in the British House of Commons. 
and do you know how much he was paid? He was paid a very heavy, hefty price of 92 lakhs per year. That was, and that is still a very heavy price, uh, even today for lawyers. But at that point of time, he was paid by Nizam. Anyways, what become very interesting to note that, even after trying all of this, Nizam wanted to buy Goa. Actually, Goa never became independent during the time of our country's independence. Goa becomes independence in 60s, independent in 60s. But uh, at that point of time, Goa was with Portuguese. And he wanted to buy Goa from the Portuguese or at least lease it so that they can have an access to the sea and directly trade with Pakistan. Now, that also didn't materialize. And Sardar Patel decided to enter. Now, Sardar was very much, you know, uh, frustrated with all Nizam's uh, and Razakar's intrigues. He was having it all. He said it, enough, it's enough. And now is the time to start action. Now is the time to walk the talk. So, Sardar offered the last chance to Nizam. Actually, he sent the last offer with the help of uh, Lord Mountbatten, saying that uh, Nizam should accept India's three important uh, subject matters. That is, it will accept India's decision on foreign affairs, defense and communication. And rest all the subjects, Nizam can decide for themselves and Hyderabad will be uh, accorded or acceded to India. Now, Nizam did not agree for that also. Because as soon as this draft came, as soon as this offer letter came, Razakars made Nizam a virtual home arrest. In fact, Nizam was made to be arrested at home. He was captured at home. He was, sub he was, he was just encircled by the Razakar followers, particularly Qasim Rizvi followers. So he was actually not that loyal to Nizam. Secondly, a uh, stage was set for action and Indian government was also prepared to invade uh, Hyderabad because Sardar Patel particularly knew that Nizam is not going to take this offer. So finally, what happens? Five things happen that actually take Hyderabad or actually accedes, leads to the accession of Hyderabad into India. Number one thing, Governor General changed. Yes, Lord Mountbatten resigned, he retired and uh, the next Governor General of India, of independent India, became C. Rajagopalachari. Now, as soon as this happened, uh, there was uh, Sardar Patel free of the pressures of Mountbatten. Mountbatten actually never wanted military action. He always wanted plebiscite. He always wanted uh, votings to be done in Hyderabad. Now, uh, that was not to be allowed by Razakars as well as by Nizam. Uh, but that is what Mountbatten hoped for. And now Rajgopalachari gave free hand to the Indian government. Secondly, Nehru was going to United States. And as Nehru went to United States, Patel became the acting prime minister. He was already the deputy prime minister, but he became the acting prime minister. And he sent a proposal to the cabinet for invasion of Hyderabad. And that was readily accepted. Third thing. The commander-in-chief of Indian Army at that point of time was a British general called as General Roy Butcher. Now, General Butcher said that uh, no British troops will uh, go for action in Hyderabad and only Indian troops will go for action if they desired so. Patel was very much happy with this and he sent uh, General Rajendra Singh Jadeja ji and uh, also uh, the future uh, chief of Indian Army, uh, Jayanto Chaudhary. Now, Jayanto Chaudhary became the person who personally saw uh, the liberation of Hyderabad. Lastly, Razakars were very much notorious for their atrocities. The pictures that you see here are the pictures of Hindu subjects being molested, being harassed and being also killed, tortured, raped by Razakar forces there. That sent the Indian government into a lot of dizzy. Lastly, Jinnah died. Right. You heard it right. On 11th of September, 1948, Jinnah was no more. The police action began on 13th. That is where things changed. Here you are seeing the picture of Nizam in black along with Sardar Patel and Jayanto Chaudhary here. Lastly, Hyderabad Liberation Operation Polo started. The police action, as it was called, started on 13th of September and it lasted till 17th of September. On 17th of September, the Major General Syed Ahmed El Darus, who was the chief of uh, Hyderabad, the army, who was actually, re actually requisitioned from Saudi Arabia, uh, he uh, 
was, as you can see the picture, he's surrendering uh, to, ma to Major Jayanto Chaudhary out here, right? Uh, not just that, uh, after this, India's first Ashok Chakra was also awarded in the Hyderabad Liberation War, right? Uh, Havaldar Bachitar Singh became the first Ashok Chakra awardee for this war. And finally, Nizam was also made uh, to have an honorable agreement. Nizam said that he was virtually being captured by Razakars. Uh, he tried to have a face-saving thing. He actually didn't know that Razakars were committing atrocities on Hindu subjects. And thereby, Indian government accorded him the status of governor of the newly liberated Hyderabad province. With all of this, India saw its first military action also, which was codenamed as police action. But you saw the first Ashok Chakra. Remember that Ashok Chakras are given for peacetime operations and not wartime operations. Wartime operations, uh, gallantry awards are given as Paramvid Chakra or Param Chakra, etc. Uh, Ashok Chakra is actually given in the peacetime operation. And the first Ashok Chakra award he became Sardar Havildar Singh, Bachitar, Havildar, uh, Havildar Bachitar Singh. Finally, uh, this ends the story of Hyderabad Liberation War, where we celebrate 17th of September as the Hyderabad Liberation Day. If you have any more queries, you can join with me on the Telegram group that I have code. I have given the quote here. At the same point of time, I would request all my dear students and all the dear viewers, subscribers, particularly that if you want to join our affordable and quality-rich program at Study IQ, particularly English out there, please use the code Ashlife. As you use the code, you'll get the maximum discount. The idea is to give you an affordable but quality education. History is a very interesting subject and I personally take it at that point. Now, be it post-independence or independence struggles for India, uh, the stories are many, but getting it right and getting it factually correct is the challenge for UPSC students and that is where we provide you the classroom coach. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you enjoyed the story. At the same point of time, we'll see you more in the classes. Thank you for watching it. My name is Ashish.